In this video, I'm going over the future of Linux, what kind of has in store for it, or at least the future I envision. And when it comes to big business, things I noticed at Linux Fest, and just general leaders in the field right now and what they're talking about Linux, and kind of wanting to change a lot of where Linux has always been headed, a lot of things people talk about in Linux, and why I don't do a lot of the normal Linuxy things. So first off, let's figure out where Linux is right now. Where's all the money in Linux? Where what people are using Linux for? Now I talk a lot about like Linux desktop and empowering people from switching from Windows over into Linux a lot on this channel. But let's get real here. It has about two percent market share. Windows has around eighty something percent market share. Uh, Mac OS I think is around ten percent, and then uh, FreeBSD and other operating systems make up a, a different portion of that. I think Chrome also counts as its own OS, even though it's based in Linux, but eh, that's a video for another day. But needless to say, Linux desktop is not really right now the future. Linux is really used in big business. Servers, uh, big data centers, those types of things, usually it's like the back end or used a lot in like virtualization clients such as uh, KVM or even uh, XCPNG or Zen server. Uh, they all use Linux kernels as its base. So just really important to know that right now all the money, all the usage of Linux is in business. So when you go to like a Linux Fest, a lot of it is business oriented because that's kind of where everything is. Now, I talk a lot about Linux Desktop, and there are a couple things about Linux Desktop I noticed at Linux Fest. I went to, I think, Confessions of a Sysadmin, and I liked some of the presentation, but I noticed some of it I didn't like. And it wasn't necessarily the speakers. I thought the speakers were fantastic, but the content itself was just old talking points that just don't work. They don't make any sense. Because when it comes to Linux desktop, there's no money in it. There's no businesses that are really invested heavily in it. They use it as kind of like a testing or a beta ground for a lot of their server operating systems. Like a Fedora is used as that testing ground for RHEL or CentOS. And it kind of drives me a little crazy because most people in the Linux desktop space, it's kind of like a, a very odd personality where... They look at it and say, hey, we need to talk about distributions and these types of distributions, or this has systemd, this doesn't have a systemd, all these different aspects that make up uh, a Linux desktop, for per se. Uh, you see it a lot in, in many of the big YouTubers as well that talk about Linux. And I don't talk about distributions really that much, and I don't go, hey, the new blah, blah, blah came out. Fedora 31 is coming out, and it has all these new features. Ubuntu 20 is coming out, and blah, blah, blah. I don't really like doing that a whole lot. I usually, when they release, I might acknowledge them and might even do a short 10-minute presentation, but then I move on. Um, the reason for this being is distributions, I've always said, don't matter, and that's kind of my mantra. I want to get more people thinking that way because when I went to this Linux Fest conference or, or these leaders really in the Linux desktop field, a lot of them were saying you need a distro hop and a lot of the distro hops they were doing just didn't make any sense to me going from like elementary to pop OS or uh, Ubuntu to pop OS. Those are the same darn operating system for the most part. All the package managers are the same. It's just the desktop environment and some settings, system settings have changed. That just drives me crazy. I hate it. For the future of Linux, we need to stop talking about this distribution, this distribution, this distribution. No, we need to focus more on what's in them. That's just all I'm saying when I say distribution doesn't matter. What's in them in a starting point is really what matters um, because in my eyes, there's only four branches of distributions that pretty much 90-something percent of the population fall into, and that's simply Arch, Debian, Red Hat, and OpenSUSE. 
those are really the four main distributions. Everything's forked usually off of these distributions. Now, I know some people like Gentoo and Void Linux and all these other ones or Slackware or Solus, which is its own independent distribution. But really, when you get down to it, most people come off of these branches. And those four distributions make up pretty much all of Linux desktop. So I really want to focus more of what makes up distributions rather than the distributions themselves. And that's really package managers and desktop environments in those types of configurations. So once you learn all that, that will kind of empower you, the user, to do whatever the hell you want with Linux, whether that's on Arch, whether it's on Debian, it just doesn't matter because you know how to do it on both. And that's where I'm going. That's where the future of this channel is. I just suck at explaining it, honestly. <laughs> I'm just not very good at getting that point across just yet. I'm going to get there, though. It might take a thousand videos, but at the rate of videos I'm making, I should get there sometime in next year. And with that, I think we're going to really see a big boom in Linux desktop once people understand Linux desktop. Because when I came to Linux Desktop and I did a challenge, yeah, I think I was making a, a whole variety of tech videos. And someone in comments said, hey, you need to do the Linux challenge. And I was like, oh, sure. And then I went to it and I was distro hopping all over the place doing Fedora, Ubuntu, Arch, you name it. I was doing all these distributions and a variety of challenges, which I'll put them down in the section below if you want to see when I was a noob. Well, I'm still kind of a noob, but at least towards last year when I first switched over to Linux desktop, what my initial impressions were. It's kind of hilarious. But at the same time, that's most people's initial impressions. Most people saw those videos and could relate to it. And the consensus is no distribution's perfect for pretty much any user. There's some distributions that are close to the user, but the user itself needs to be empowered and then modify that distribution for their needs. And that's really what I'm getting to. And that's really the future of Linux. Instead of talking about distributions, we need to be empowering users, teaching them about all the different things. If they don't like the way Linux looks or they don't like the way the file manager acts, teaching them how to change all the components of a Linux distribution is far more powerful than telling them, hey, this distribution comes with shiny object A and B. Check out how it reacts and the icons now have rounded edges and look newer. And that's pretty much sums up every single Linux distribution features list that you see on YouTube or even around the web, really. Uh, we, as a community in Linux, need to stop talking about distributions and start talking about what makes up a distribution. Because once you figure out what makes up a distribution, you'll figure out the components you like best. A lot of people are always asking, what distribution are you running? And a lot of times I'm like, it doesn't really matter. My desktop always looks the same, whether it's on Arch, whether it's on Fedora, whether it is on Debian. They always look the same because for desktop environments, I always like, ooh, KDE. I'm a KDE guy. I like KDE. But a lot of people like Mate. A lot of people like Gnome. It just depends on what they like and what you like. And then once you figure that out, you're like, okay, this is how it looks. And then you figure out what package manager you like. And this really kind of isolates down the distribution. Do you like to build stuff or do you hate building stuff from source and you like to just get it all from a repository? You might be an Arch user. You might go, hey, I like the AUR, even though it has some out-of-date packages that sometimes break. Again, video for another day. But if you get an AUR and you get your up-to-date packages, you know, a lot of will build it for you and it'll work every time and it's awesome. And it uses Pac-Man, which is uh, a different method from Yum or DNF if you're a Fedora guy. Yum and DNF have its own set of benefits when it comes to package managers. So if you like Yum and DNF, I know DNF a lot of times does a better job of finding dependencies. It does Delta updates to where it's not super huge hog of your bandwidth, those things are really nice when you look at it. And also, it's more enterprise-based. So if you're more into business and stability, a lot of things that Fedora offers and CentOS offers kind of would jive with you. And you know, oh, okay, 
I need to look for those types of distributions. Or if you want mass appeal and you like APT and you're constantly following guides through, through the web, a lot of times you're going to be on a Debian-based distribution and that has its own different spawns. But once you understand all these things, you figure out, okay, I like these package managers. I like these desktop environments. I like this file manager. I like that, that, that. And you kind of figure out all those different things. It makes the distribution finding non-existent. I just don't care anymore. People say, hey, try this out. I'm like, sure. I'll go ahead and install that and then I'll make it look pretty much the same as my current desktop because uh, I like the way it functions and operates. I've tried pretty much every desktop environment out there now, and this is the one I really enjoy. But I, I think a lot of people look at this, and I just wanted to just come out and say, hey, this is really the future of Linux. You look at Windows or Mac OS X, it's a very stagnant, crappy experience, but it's an experience people are familiar with. And it's amazing what the masses will put up with when that's all they know. And the fear of the unknown and those types of things really are the thing that really scare people. And that's why I say, hey, you may not like Linux, and Linux may not be for you, but if you try it, at least you know there's an option. And if you understand how Linux distributions work and how they're comprised of, and what they're comprised of, you're going to go, this is extremely powerful and just an awesome tool. So that's really why I say, hey, this is the future of Linux. And that's why I do a lot of these videos. And I'm going to make a lot of this video probably many times over and probably be better uh, at making a clear message for new users. But that's my goal. That's what I'm trying to do, kind of push that uh, future of Linux and other content creators helping them say, hey, uh, stop talking about this stuff or don't talk about it as much. You could actually shape a lot of new users coming to Linux and help them a lot more by explaining what's in a distribution instead of saying, hey, we have a thousand different distributions. Take your pick. Everybody's different. That's a crappy way to, to encourage adoption. And honestly, you're just scaring people away because they'll try four or five distributions and then just get fed up and quit and go back to Windows because that's what most people do when it comes to Linux. So that's the path we've been on for the past 10, 15 years. Let's try something different. And that's really what I'm doing here. And that's what this channel's about. But with all that said, let me know your comments down below. A special shout out to my patrons. Without you, these videos would not be possible and I'll see you on the next one.